This podcast is an expression of the personal views and opinions of the hosts and guests, and they do not represent the official stance of the podcast, its sponsors, or affiliated organizations. The podcast may cover topics such as drugs, mental illness, politics, and religion, which can be controversial or sensitive. The podcast does not support any illegal activities and advises listeners to seek help from appropriate professionals for any personal concerns related to these topics. The information provided in the podcast is for general informational purposes only and it is not a substitute for professional advice. Listeners are urged to consult with a qualified healthcare professional for any questions regarding their mental or physical health. The podcast and its creators are not responsible for any loss or harm resulting from the use or reliance on the information provided in the podcast. Hey, yo, turn my mic up. Let's get it on. Welcome to the Street Stoics Podcast. I am your host, Jay, and joining me as always from Oregon, Nate and Mike. How you guys doing tonight? Living the dream. Doing good. Living the dream. Can't complain. We can't complain at all. That's true. There's no reasons why we should be complaining. That's right. So, last week's episode, uh, we went over distractions. Hey, uh, Nate, can you give us a a nice little recap of what that episode was like? Yeah. So, uh, last week, we talked about distractions kind of like in a general sense and then what they meant to us individually Uh, We included our own personal distractions and how we fight through those things each day within our lives. So it was a it was a pretty good video or episode, whatever, because we're doing both now. And, you know, I think we got a lot of enjoyment out of it. We all got a little passionate in it. And I think that that was important. I really liked how that turned out. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Dude, it was an awesome, it was an awesome episode. Definitely. I feel like after that episode, <laughs> I become more aware, especially when I'm, I'm falling into distractions. It's like, oh, there I, there I go again. There I go again. I got to catch That's myself right. in those moments and be like, hey, come on, man. You just had an episode on distractions yeah. and look at you. Quit it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So today's yeah. episode... Yeah. We're going to dive in into something that I think uh, it's going to it's going to mean a lot to me because it's something that I feel it's part of what's going on in my experience. Right. It's the realization of what perspective is. Um, first, I want to take it over to Mike so he can provide us here a, um, a definition uh, from our friend chat gpt uh as far as what perspective is all right uh perspective refers to the way individuals perceive or interpret the world around them including their thoughts beliefs and understandings of events situations and experiences it encompasses one of the points of view attitudes and opinions shaped by various factors such as personal experiences, cultural background, education, and social influences. It's pretty descriptive there. I feel like you got something, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's uh that's pretty good as far as that information because I feel like it best describe what I feel I've become aware of in the last year two years right the the fact that we live in a world where everyone is an individual that regardless of what char- characteristics groupings you know you want to put them into categories whatever it is that you put anyone into 
we are all individuals with a unique perspective in life. Something that I experienced through one of my mushroom trips was an understanding of what perspective is in a way that I feel it was kind of my eyes were open to understanding that I think it started first with realiz realizing my perspective as to who I am, what I am, and why I am. <clears throat> from that, from that, I was able to kind of figure out a lot of my own problems that I have and the reasons why I do certain things in life. Why is it that I do them in those ways? Why is it that my reaction is this way? I asked a lot of questions during that time where it was kind of to understand myself because that's what a self-reflection is. When somebody says, you know, have a self-reflection, work on yourself, that's pretty much what that moment was for me to understand that I have a, an individual perspective in life and everyone else does as well. So through that, I understand that just because maybe I view things a certain way, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's right. That doesn't necessarily mean that that somebody else is right or wrong. A lot of times we function on just what we were raised on, what we were taught, what information came across us visually, you know, through through hearing, everything that we are is from our life experience. And so some people didn't have or don't have the same experiences as you do. And even if you have two different individuals that had experienced the same thing, their perspective on what they feel about that same situation can be completely different because of factors in that person's life in the past. And understanding that and going about life, just encountering people and understanding that it's frustrating having to deal with a person, but you have to also have that compassion have that empathy, have that different perspective to understand that this person didn't have possibly the same education that you did, didn't have the same upbringing that you did, they don't have the same values that you do. Are they wrong for that? They are what they are with the best that they were given. Um, and, and that's that's kind of why this, this whole perspective thing means a lot to me because I feel that I've been able to function a lot better like that. I don't I don't hold any grudges to nobody of, of over things as far as why they do certain things like people that, you know, gossip talk and you know, say things. I I used to care. <laughs> I used to care. I used to worry about oh what that person's gonna think or what they're gonna say i i don't care that is their perspective based upon factors that led them to think the way that they do so they don't live in my head they don't know what i have gone through they don't know what i experience daily they don't know how i handle myself so why should i worry about what their opinions are so that's that's kind of the way that just molding myself to view that everyone has a whole different upbringing. There's a different perspective that everybody else has. So there's never really a yes or no answer to a lot of things because 
how do you say yes or, or no or this is right and this is wrong when people have come up in life with whatever it is that they know, whatever it is that they were given. They The same rules don't apply everywhere. You guys got anything to add to that or any comments on that? Yeah. So, um, man, I, I like that uh, Mike opened it up with like what chat GPT or what the internet, kind of like a a description definition of what perspective means. And, you know, you kind of dabbled into that and what that looks like in a realistic view for yourself personally. And then what I'm kind of hearing is, you know, through your mushroom trip and uh, that self-analyzation and finding stoicism, it's like stoicism was the key that unlocked this idea that your reality is or was rather your own perception and that now all those things that you had to cope with throughout your life until that point you realize that the that other input that other external stimuli that you were receiving was actually other people's perceptions and how they affected you like that's what you're saying yeah, uh, the way that you're describing it, it it puts it into into a definition that I think uh, is exactly what I feel. So, as far as where the stoicism comes in, <clears throat> I feel that when I first started having that realization, that experience, because there's a little bit more to it, um, but yeah, when I first started having these realizations like oh like wait a second i'm alive i why am i worried about a bunch of this stuff in my life that is just nonsense like some of these rules that we put on ourselves as as humans or as as whatever whatever the you know whatever the role whatever the category you know we can say americans uh from you know as a person, a part of, you know, this part of society, that part of society, we put certain rules like, oh, we can't do that because, you know, what would people say? That's not what we do. That's not how we do things. All of that made up rules. <laughs> All of that is made up rules that we follow as, as people. I, I, I get it. Some people, that's how they function and that's okay. But yeah. to think that everybody needs to do it that way because this is how it works for you is where I think a lot of problems are. So, yeah, the stoicism came in right after uh, I had that experience or that realization because for that for for some time I was just in like, what? What's going on? Like, that's that's the moment where I feel everything kind of feels a little bit weird. Like, oh sh- oh shit! Like this this feels different like i don't understand why i feel this now like i have this experience like i guess that's what they say when you're 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 awakened so you have that experience of like oh i'm something inside of this body and i'm here living with everybody else that's the same thing you know a person having their own individual experience with their whole history behind them that made that particular person who I am encountering now. That's how, how things, you know, how I started viewing things. And that was kind of weird. So when I started reading about stoicism it started clicking, it's like, okay, now, now I get it. It, it. it structures it. It keeps it more balanced for me where I'm, I, I see it in a way of like, okay, these people, I, I just, I don't let them bother me. Their opinions are their own individual opinions in life, whatever this experience is, just treat it like that, right? Just all the, all the stoic approaches of it, the values of being true, having empathy for people, all of that. That's, that's part of what my realization is of conducting yourself in a way that improves yourself where you stay healthy where 
what you consume is what makes you. You are what you consume, be it, you know, food, the music that you listen to, the visual stuff, you know, movies, shows, whatever it is. You start morphing your opinions, your perception, your perspective on things based on all of that information that you're intaking. And through stoicism, it makes me more aware of that, right? Because it, yeah. it lets me know, okay, don't get distracted, <laughs> like last week, last week's episode, and stay focused because there's something more to this. As far as what life is, it's, it's a journey, and there's something about it that you have to experience it. And that's, that's what I feel I'm in now, just enjoying the experience, man. Exactly, man. And dude, I'm listening to you. Um, and I cannot help but to think of this quote from Confucius. And Confucius once said, uh, we have two lives. And the second begins when we realize we only have one. And so for me, when when you're describing this, I think directly to Confucius, man, uh, you know, like in the beginning, we thought we only have this one life, but we don't have that new perspective of, you know, valuing our focus and how we interact with others and things like that. And then once whatever that cataclysm, that trigger is that shifts our mindset from, and to put this in more modern terms, uh, for those like newer listeners, fixed and growth mindset. It's like before we began in this very fixed mindset, even though since we were living it, we couldn't see it. We could not see how fixed our mind was. And as soon as you learn about these different perspectives, we, it's more of a growth mindset. It's not, and I'm not saying it's perfect and it's not going to be perfect. We're all human, but it's that growth part. Nothing ever is. Exactly. It's the growth mindset that, you know, it's not perfect and that's okay because there's room to grow. So that's why I, I believe that Confucius said we have two lives and the second one begins as soon as we realize we only have one. We now have this focus, this perspective of, wow, how little control I had beforehand. And what's the funniest thing is part of that thing that makes you think you have, um, you know, a, a growth mindset is when you don't feel like you have control, you're hungry for control and you become a controller, uh, somebody who everything has to go right. The minute it goes wrong, it's chaos. Chaos ensues because it wasn't part of the plan. And even if you thought you weren't a planner, maybe you thought you didn't even make lists and goals and things like that. Your brain did that for you. You had an expectation of the future. And once you start to mitigate and reduce that expectation with these newfound perspectives, now you're entering that growth mindset realm. Whether that be stoicism, whether that be, you know, whatever it is for you, that's the beauty that we're, we're going to get at in this video. That's the beauty that Jay is describing in his life. He, it sounds like he had multiple cataclysms and they were like snowballing. And the funny thing is, is <laughs> as soon as you start making it, and I'm sure Jay can confirm this for me, is if the momentum feels like, okay, now I'm going downhill. Things are getting a little bit easier. But let us not forget about that picture, that ancient photo. There's a huge boulder and the man is pushing it up hill. That's still our path. It's just how we perceive things that that's what affects this, right? 
if we per so actually I forgot there's some people who can't see my hand gestures that's what affects your heart that's what affects your soul right so even though we're pushing this heavy object uphill our perspective went from in the beginning like there's no end to this this is too hard I can't do this type of thinking to this is me this is what I'm supposed to do and the only easy day was yesterday and with that perspective it changes our mindset it changes our mindset to be more positive to be more open to realize these other perspectives that people have and these other realities other episodes we call them realities and we each have our own and not not to to go too far into depth about this because i know generally with our podcast episodes we kind of start with a small scope and then we get a little bit broader but i think since we're on the topic of perspective to really emphasize what Mike read to us and what Jay is talking about. I want everybody listening or watching, I want you to think about wherever you're at, your state, your country, whatever. Whatever your state is, whatever your country is, I guarantee it has quote unquote enemies, right? Now, we are taught from the very beginnings that there's a good guy and a bad guy. That's the, the greatest stories of all times. Any movie, there's a good guy and a bad guy. And it doesn't matter which belief system, which value system, which spiritual system that they come from. There's whatever, whoever wrote the movie, the book, the story, whatever, there's a good guy. And that good guy is whatever side from their perspective is, right? It's their perspective. So us sitting here, in the US and they're talking about, we got this and that for enemies and all this thing. So that's saying like, we're the good guys and they're the bad guys. However, that's, that's based solely on our morals, our views, our spirituality in this confined area, right? The other party that we look at as bad, if we look at their perspective, they are thinking they are the good guys. They're not thinking, they're not believing, they know that they are the good guys and they are doing good. And so with this open perspective, you have two good guys just believing in two different things and knowing two different things, butting heads and fighting for what? And so that's a very broad picture Something that we can all relate to of what perspective is. That is right. That is right. Hey, Mike, uh, you got more on that uh, definitions for perspective? I do. I do. Uh, so perspective can also refer to a particular mindset or outlook on life. It influences how individuals interpret and respond to situations, challenges, and interactions with others. Different perspectives can lead to a ver ver varied opinions, understanding, and judgments about the same subject or event. That's kind of like yeah. what uh, Nate was already saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. Pretty much on the mindset or outlook of life. Right. Chat GPT, I already had a definition for what you were talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. You got you got anything else, Mike, on that? I uh, you know, I uh you know, Jay, you were saying that this perspective is is something that's really important to you. Uh I feel the same. Uh I think we spend a lot of time uh arguing to make sure that our perspective is the perspective. And what I mean by that is 
our our perspective like we've already talked about is is formed from our from our lived experience right and that that lived experience has made our all of our perspective right and so why wouldn't that be important to everybody uh the next step in your growth is having some empathy towards other people's perspectives and realizing that they are they have those opinions for a reason right i think we spend a lot of time uh being angry and upset and i i know i i'm guilty of this uh of being upset and angry uh at people just because they don't see the same things that i do right it's frustrating yep. it is frustrating it's very frustrating uh I know Nate and I run into this on a daily basis at work. Uh, you know, right now we have, we're, um, we're merging two departments together. And so we're trying to build this one strong, really big team. Uh, and the teams that are combined, you know, we have our own perspectives and what's important to us. And then this other group, same thing. They have their perspectives and what's important to them. And trying to mesh those two to work together has been the biggest challenge, uh, and that's just because we both uh, we both believe, and it, it's going to take one side. And I think that's one one thing that, as a team, that we have uh, really decided that we're going to extend that olive branch to say, like, "Hey, your perspective is just as important as ours," and we have to come together and make a make a team. Uh, and I think society in general you know that's something that needs to be practiced more is hey i i see i see your lived experience i see that you are passionate about what you believe in and that's important to you that's also important to me right and i think if we right. if we had that mindset of you know your perspective is important to me because it's important to you uh we'll get a lot more a lot more buy-in and uh and a lot less fighting. I agree. That is true. Yeah. Man. So part of, uh, part of something also that I felt was revealed around that same experience, the trip that I had was, and it comes kind of like a, uh, a euphoric vision, right? Of how, each one of us lives in what, at the time, or the way that I can more or less um, define it, or, or just the analogy that I can provide for this is just that we all live in our own bubbles. We live in a bubble that we create with what we experience, with what we like, what things we are interested in so the more you experience and the more you're open to things the bigger your bubble gets so the bigger your bubble gets the more it merges with other people's bubbles that also have common things with you so they start kind of coming in and out of that bubble it gets a little confusing but each one of us and I was reading a definition of it earlier, too, and it's the exact same thing as what people say. You are your environment. You are what's in your bubble. That's who you are. So if your bubble is small with information, experiences, but you want to express yourself and state that you're a that your opinion is the only correct opinion based on the size of that experience bubble. How does that make any sense? We all have different things that we're all into and we are not all the same. And that's where our perspectives come from, from the whatever is within our bubbles 
and sometimes in certain bubbles you are you just grow disdain or just hate for somebody else because they don't live like you, they do in your bubble and i think that's that's a lot of the problems we're having we're experiencing now because we're just too distracted to realize that we're all just living in our own bubbles. That's like I've heard the mention, you know, online about people just having an echo chamber. That's all they do. They just live within a bubble that's an echo chamber where they only look for the opinions of people that have like-minded information. And they just don't want to listen to anybody else because they're wrong. They're from that other bubble. They're not, they're not like us. So why do I care about them? There's other perspectives out there, man. Like not everybody lives the same way that you do. Not everybody lives the, it, just because they don't have that experience like you do daily and they have a completely different one. Why do you think that that's worse than your lifestyle that's that's where like I, I that's why it means a lot to me because i have that realization right where i i understand this this perspective but now i have to kind of deal with the fact that i understand that other people won't realize that they won't realize that they're living in a bubble that they're they're consumed in and they aren't open to understanding that hey we are having an experience we're living here present so enjoy it because literally anything can happen at any moment and if anyone has ever lost somebody in their life you can you know that it sometimes in tragedy, in an instant, memento mori, right? Memento mori. Memento mori and amor fate, both at the same time. You know, uh, not to cut in too much, Jay, but I think Rudyard Kipling said it best. Uh, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. So those two things remind me of the bridge that I see in my mind between what you started off saying earlier and this new analogy. I think to bridge the gap you know, there used to be that saying, and I don't recall who said it, is show me your closest friends or your friend circle, and I'll tell you exactly who you are. When Jay was talking about our minds are like our diets and whatever we put into our body, our body uses to regenerate tissue. The same thing happens in our minds, right? And so think about that. Jay's talking about the bubble. You are the center bubble. In the all the bubbles around you, those are your friends and family. Those are the people that you let feed into your mind. And if that is your sole focus, that is who you become. You are now the person that other, that you think people perceive you as. So it's like an inception of perceptions, right? You have your own perception going into this situation. They have their own and neither of you know what the other's is. But then you both are interacting based on what each other think your perception of the other one is. That might be hard to follow unless you're a fan of Perception or the movie Tenet. I love those movies. Christopher Nolan, shout out. Maybe come on to the podcast sometime. And what does that mean? Is It means that we're doing these things in a ridiculous manner. You don't have to know exactly what the other person's thinking. The stoic uh, spirit, the embodiment of stoicism 
is to why, like, why do we value someone else's opinion about us and we devalue ourselves And that? If you do that too much, it, it doesn't make you the person you want to be. It doesn't make you the person they want you to be or need you to be. You cannot help other people unless you help yourself first, right? So stop making these assumptions of what other people perceive you as. That is no way to live. That's not controlling your diet. And if we're relating it back to food, it's unfortunate that in today's society, at least here in the United States, healthy foods, consuming those is considered a diet. What the hell is that? Healthy foods should be our sole consumption, right? And we talked about technology and social media, right? Those things being distractions. Now think about how those things affect our mind's diet, right? We already started getting into that and how those we label them as distractions, but how they start to affect our focus. This is the other side of that right? What is it on our side? How do those things influence us? If we watch something over and over and it's in a certain way and Jay is basically verbally describing an echo chamber, right? We are creatures of comfort. So the more comfortable we are, the more positive affirmations we receive, That is what we look for, and that's no way to grow. It keeps you the same. If you want to get better at a skill or a task or a sport, but you keep squatting and practicing with the the B team, you're going to maybe eventually beat the B team, but is that the best that you could do? When in comparison, you can get with the freaking A team, and you can be dead last freaking place every time and be beating your personal records every practice and every game. So, oh, it looks like Mike, uh, you, you have a quote that uh, ties into that, Mike? Yeah, I do. Um, it's, a qu- it's a quick one. Um, yeah. But it's from Epictetus. And it says, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. That is, thank you, Mike. Because when we start talking about the unconflicted person, which I hopefully started talking about the last episode, uh, our heroes of our stories, right? They're always somebody else. And it's because that person doesn't believe or think they know. Be the hero of your own story. That's exactly what we're talking about. This whole perception thing and, you know, like how it affects us, like it's, it's, it's not doing us any good. So if we have that growth perspective, if we seek out, uh, as Rudyard Kipling says, you know, um, if you can keep your head with all about you, losing them, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, right? That means you stay the path. At all costs, I will not go gently into that good night, as Dylan Thomas says. I will rage, rage against the dying of the light. That means you're putting your heart, your soul, and vigor into everything you're doing. And Rudyard Kipling puts the slightest little spin on it. But if you can make allowance for their doubting too. That's a self-analytical piece. Some people might have been there. They have a different perspective. They might be able to see something that you can't see through the mist, through the tunnel vision. And a lot of that external input, it it doesn't really matter, but there's golden nuggets and a little bit of everything. And that's why people foster this uh, mindset for growth of, you know, even if you lost, even if it was a terrible day, terrible book, terrible movie, What did you get from it? What did you learn? Because you should be taking at least something away. When people blow up at you, 
And they say, no, you're doing a terrible job. And all of a sudden, this really abrasive, aggressive critique comes your way. Maybe the delivery wasn't as tasteful. That's our perspective. But they're doing, what's their intent? Right? There, there, there's something there. And because their emotions were tied in it, and we have two different worldviews and values and belief systems. We have to filter that. What was that thing? And if you want to be a better communicator, you sit on it if you feel emotions because the best uh, you know, fight against anger is delay, time. You come back to that person and you say, hey, thank you. I think that I took this away. And you start clarifying with them. Start realizing what each other's talking about. Because now that there's been this time, you can break down some barriers and be like, yeah, dude, you know, I'm sorry for this. But yeah, that, that is what I meant. Or yeah, dude, that's kind of, but you know, I think, you know, a little bit of this. And then you're like, oh man, I could totally see that. You know, why was it in World War I that the Germans and the French were fighting and on Christmas they stopped and they played board great games and they, they played soccer. And it's just because there's two different perspectives, right? And they realize that they're just humans. And, you know, unfortunately after that holiday, they went straight back to fighting. And it's just too bad. It's too bad that we can't stay within that open realm. I know I went on a tangent. It's all good. No, I mean, it's it's all good, man, because I, I feel a tangent coming for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. So, <clears throat> <laughs> so like I said earlier, right? <clears throat> the question that I asked myself, which I don't know if somebody has already kind of made it a catchphrase, but I'm liking it. Who am I? What am I? And why am I? Right? Those are the questions that everybody should be asking themselves. Who are you? Like, what makes you who you are? Yeah. And then what? What are you? Like, what, what, like, what type of person are you? Understanding also that, what, what are you? What are we here living in this experience? What, what are you? Jeez. Trying to understand that. And then why, why are you the way that you are? And reflect back at, reflect back at moments that you've experienced, right? That have somehow tied themselves to your mannerisms, your characteristics, the way that you conduct yourself, the things that you were trained on that you still now make it as your day-to-day -day hobbies or, or, or the way that you conduct yourself. We're, we all can be molded into different things by what we go through and experience. Somebody that goes through tragedy is can be greatly affected and the course of their life changes and they are no longer the same person that they were before. And that's, that's what life is. Life is that, the fact that in an instant, oh, anything shit. can change and then you become a whole different person. You cease to act or do things the way that you did because stuff happens in your life. That's, that's what I think a lot of people should ask themselves, have that internal reflection, that internal question to understand themselves better. Why is it that I can't get up to do this and then start looking at all the factors that go into play. Oh, I spend time doing this when maybe I don't need to be doing that, but it makes me feel good. 
But does it make you feel good that you're not doing what you want to do? Bro. Well, that's that's the part of not doing things that are just, you know, comfortable. Because that's the stuff that robs you of your time. That we don't know how much time we have. At any Bro. moment, it can be done. Mm -hmm. I'm chomping at so, the bits here. <laughs> <laughs> Go. 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 Bro, I gotta, I got, I gotta share this new perspective in the moment. I want it to be as real as possible. It doesn't rob you of your time. It robs you of fucking you. It robs you of who you could be and who you probably want to be. God dang, Jay. Thank you, my man. I love this podcast. I love doing it with you guys. <laughs> every episode my mind gets blown and I'm thinking you said that tragedy happens and it changes you like fucking that. So many people say people can't change Yep. until they meet tragedy and they change like a motherfucker. I'm, what? I feel like I, I, no. I, I gotta say this just because it's kind of how the thought goes through my mind, right? As I'm talking and saying these things, I I think in my head, like, am I making sense to everybody? This is are people understanding exactly what it is that I'm saying? Because sometimes I feel like I might get lost in the conversation that I'm talking and I'm trying to stick to as much details, as much information that I have been thinking about. And when they're coming out, I'm just looking, I'm looking at you guys and your responses. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if I'm making sense right now. I hope that I'm getting my point across that this is how I see things. This is genuine. This is how I process things as far as information and what I'm experiencing. I, like I said, I'm not here to, to be an activist to say, Hey, <laughs> try some mushrooms and have this crazy ass experience. No. It's not, it's not for everybody. I don't know, you know, how people react to certain things for me, profound. And whatever it's, it's as far as I go, as far as talking about it, because it's not, not much else is necessary to, to say, but my, <laughs> what I've, what I've gone through after that, I, I just, wow. The benefits of it. Crazy to now have this perspective and then be able to pair it with stoicism. This is the, to me, the best way that somebody can live life just to be able to have the, the sense of presence to be present and know what that you, okay, like this is life. You don't necessarily have to do everything by the rules that are, you know, being enforced that, you know, sometimes you, you don't agree with, you know, it's the, the society rules. Those, those are the rules I'm talking about. It doesn't always have to be done the way that certain people think that it needs to be done. Just like with parenting, you know, people choose to do it the way that they feel comfortable doing it. And, you know, there's there's a lot of other things that everyone has an opinion on because they feel that, oh, it should be done this way. Or, or how, how come is it that you guys are doing it that way? It's working for us. It's, you know, everyone has their own experience. They figure it out. We're all we're, we're all trying to figure it out here in this world. Everybody, everybody is out here having an experience trying to figure it out trying to figure out okay so this is life and i have to go through life every day how is it that you want to experience it how is it that you want to go about life do you want to continue being the person who feels like they're wasting time that they aren't doing the things that they want to do or do you want to actually live and experience life? 
and be present, you know, and and just understand also and show the compassion that we're all different, right? We all come from different environments. We're all into different things. A lot of us have a lot of common things. I mean, you guys, when I, 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 I that's the thing that I like to do, right? From having lived in multiple states, multiple cities, different types of environments, from having jobs that have, you know, provided me the opportunity to travel and go and and meet other people from other locations, other cities, in remote places, in like the middle of Georgia, in the middle of Alabama, in the middle of Mississippi, um, up in Chicago, Michigan, like all these type of different people, right? They all have a history. They all have their own individual lives that they experienced and life there operated in a whole different way than life where I came from. So a lot of times I feel like, yeah, I stick out. Like people don't, they know that I'm not from around there, but I don't let that be a, something to deter me or just make me feel uncomfortable. I, I, I'm here. I'm just going about this plane of existence going wherever it is that I can go and just ex enjoying the experience. I like being in, you know, certain environments where I'm just like, damn, this is interesting. I wonder what it's like to live here, come here often, and just this is the environment. That's that's the type of things that I, you know, I like questioning. I like I like thinking about stuff like that. Like, what, what would life be like here? It's, I've asked questions like, I, 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 funny thing, on a plane trip that I had this week, I sat down next to um, some lady who, I think she told me she was like in her 60s. <clears throat> so she asked me if I was flying or, or if I lived from where I, we were flying to. And I told her no. And she, I told her we were, that I had just moved to where I was flying from. So she tells me that she's from some small town in Georgia somewhere and she even <laughs> looked it up on her on her map and showed it to me and she tells me yeah I've lived there all my life and I started thinking right away I'm like wow what's that like right living in the same town for pretty much all your life and all you know is your environment that you've lived in. That's all like, and, and whatever you come across on TV. And that's, that's the other thing, right? Where what shapes us a lot, what adds or attaches itself to our perspective and then our opinions is what we see on TV, what we see on social media, what we see in the news. That's, what a lot of people are being shaped to believe a lot of these other places are like. And so they're developing opinions of places that they've never really been or some cases of certain issues in certain places that just get amplified more to make everybody think that that place is, you know, this way, that way, you know. Every, like every place that I've been to has always had like a stereotypical thing about it. Like when you think about that place, everyone goes, oh, and they'll mention something like, you know, Portland. You know, what everybody thinks about Portland <laughs> or Alabama. What is what do people think about Alabama? You know, I've been to these places and then I'm like, it's, I mean, <laughs> yes, Portland is a is very weird. But there's a lot of good around there, especially in the outskirts. Shout out to Beaverton. Uh, but yeah, like, like we, everyone just forms their perspective or opinion on things because they saw it somewhere else or somebody told them that without actually having experienced it to see it for themselves that, hey, it's not really like that, man. Not everybody out in the country is racist. They just don't know. They don't understand what the lifestyle for certain people is in the big cities. Just like people that live in the big cities don't understand what that would be like to just live out in the country. You don't know. 
if you haven't experienced it. So there's a different characteristics to people like that. And that's where I'm like, okay, we are divided, but that's because we don't understand each other. That's all it is. We're just not understanding that, hey, we're different. And my whatever political opinion is necessarily for my community here, not necessarily for yours, but because it always dictates the whole state or the whole city or whatever the matter is, just to try to be general here. People don't take that into consideration. And then so it's just a back and forth of I'm right, you're wrong, you know. And if we never understand that, then how far are we going to get? So, yeah. Anything anything on that, man? Because I, I, I'm going to continue going. <laughs> Damn, Jim, you're on fire tonight. You are on fire. Uh, you were, you're, you're talking and, uh, one of the quotes that I picked for tonight's episode, uh, it actually came from UC, old UCLA basketball coach, John Wooden. Um, and what you're talking about really reminded me of this quote. Um, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. And it's the courage that counts. So success is believing what you believe, right? You've made it. You've conformed to what you know. Congratulations, right? Guess what? You're going to fucking fail, right? But it's not the end of the world. So have the courage to go out there and see other things. See what's different than, than challenge yourself to find different points of view. Right. Um, and that takes courage. That takes courage to say, you know what? I don't know everything. What, what I've been taught my whole life isn't necessarily right. Right. Get out there and find it. Right. That's an, that's what I think a lot of times I find myself trying to explain certain things to people and they're like, Oh, I didn't know that. How do you know these things? And I'm like, I don't know. I've always exposed myself to certain things. Just, I like knowing things, right? I, I, I like understanding that certain people think this way. A lot of times, you know, I have been asked like, why are you, why do you like care to even like, look into those conspiracy theories and stuff. And I'm just like, because it lets you know that there's somebody out there that believes mm -hmm. these things and they're experiencing something where they believe this, this way. And the power of believing in something is, is pretty crazy. It's, it's insane how, how far certain people will be led on just the power of belief. Right. The, the fact that they heard something somewhere and all this information, just just think about that, right? How how an individual becomes like a, a big, deep like conspiracy theory. And, and come on, at this point, like even I was watching uh, that uh, stand up uh, clip from Ron Funches where he talks about like about um, believe like how is it that at this day and age you don't believe in at least you know one or two conspiracies out there? It's like really you think the uh, the government's batting a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> so, so so yeah like I, I i dabble in trying to find out certain things that are going on i like being aware of that just kind of oh shit this is what people are thinking whatever that's how i treat it right because there is really no time for you to be wasting on what hasn't happened or what's not happening here in your your present area your present moment so a lot of times you know in a sense it's not even it's not like saying oh that it's not happening to me i'm not i'm not i'm not affected by it, it 
just to be aware i think it's 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 just the good thing just to be aware that hey you know damn that's that's something that they're saying they're saying this they're saying that and that's it just carry on that i don't put too much mind into it but just Mm -hmm. think about that right somebody hears information about something that happened based on information provided evidence clips you know whatever it is a a a youtube video uh instagram video about something that they're saying is happening this is something that's happening somewhere else miles and miles away sometimes and you're getting the information from one person's perspective Mm -hmm. that they experienced this and we don't know what type of person this is what actual perspective it is that they have what is their motive when they are reporting this we put some sort of confidence sometimes in individuals to think that they're being genuine and a lot of times then we have other people that will flat out just say no he's lying that's bullshit and that's it and just Mm -hmm. dismiss it we don't know we never know because again that is their perspective and we don't live in other people's heads. We don't know exactly what they're thinking. You actually don't know. Unless you do, and that's some crazy ass ability that I didn't know existed. Right. That's crazy. Like, what is that? Telepathy is what they call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it it's going to bring up now my... I had to write this down, right? Because I, I knew I was going to end up going into this uh, this conversation about... You don't know what somebody else is actually thinking or feeling. So the the one random thing that came to mind was the perspective of a nurse, right? Or a doctor at a hospital that a patient comes in or somebody comes in with some sort of ailment and they're telling you that something hurts. How will you ever understand what that actual pain is like for that person? You don't. You can't. (laughs) There is absolutely Mm -hmm. no way. No. You are just having to go by what the patient is telling you and known history or common history of other people that have experienced this. But even then, that really doesn't mean that that is exactly the same thing that they got going on or the same pain that they got going on from the same ailment. Not even close. And that's that's where I feel like a lot of times we need to see it that way for everything. Everybody else has a whole different, you know, a lot of times people get upset because somebody, you know, it, they feel they're being ignored because, you know, they haven't called them. They haven't said this. They haven't said that. And all they think about is like, oh, they're just not finding the time for me and, or this and that. It's just like, you, you're, not, you're not here in this present area, my moment to understand what exactly it is that's going on around me. So you have to have that understanding that, oh, there must be something going on. You d- And you don't know. You just don't know what, what it is. And that's how it is for a lot of things in life. We really don't know. We, we only know from what somebody says or a, a, somebody who's telling the past. Is all that is. Well, and, and you're just I getting may, the information from them. Yeah. If I may, uh, another perspective on that, uh, to dive deeper into you saying we don't know, is we also don't know ourselves. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? Yep. The doctor asks me all the time, how do you feel? I have this lung disease, this rare ass lung disease. I feel fucking normal because I've lived with it my whole fucking life. Mm-hmm. 
So tell me how I'm going to articulate to you how I feel when this is my perception of my life, right? To get into the stoicism th side of things, you stub your toe, you say, ow, you think it hurts. Does it have to hurt? Do you feel that pain? You know, we were talking about the John Stroud story last episode, right? Guy breaks his rib, says ow, hops on the train, goes home, goes years without knowing he broke this rib. That is a perception. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. He didn't know. He was. You should have seen the look on his face when he found out he broke it. He was like, oh, I guess I fell pretty hard. You know what I mean? So when, <laughs> when we do these things, you know, and this is going to tap into kind of where I was going. I didn't want Jay to lose his thought because he is running it tonight and I'm loving it. I, I'm getting a new perspective from that. So Jay says, you know, we feel these tragedies and we change. It can happen. I'm not saying it happens all the time and I don't think he was either, right? These tragedies happen and people change. Could be serious injury, something like that, but our lives change, our perspectives change. And people say people don't change for the better, they change for the worse. That's a perspective. However, in the same amount of time a tragedy could change us, so could triumph. And triumph takes more effort, more discomfort, more work that you feel uncomfortable doing. And the problem with ourselves and our minds and what we want to perceive, and the thing is, is you might think you don't understand perception, but motherfuckers, you do. Because here's the thing. You want to get better, you say you want to get better. When it goes to get better, when you meet that discomfort, that obstacle in the way, what do you tell yourself to get out of it? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start Monday. I'll do it later. I can't do this. All of those things that you're telling yourself, you are changing your perspective. Mm -hmm. You are making your mindset accepting that you don't need to fucking change. The other day, I started trying to do this cold water thing because I was like, uh, I, I want to do something discomforting. I filled my bathtub with cold water. I did not put ice in it because, you know, did some research. You got to work your way up. I'm on blood thinners. It's not good. I, dude, I put my feet in there and I immediately jumped out. And I was like, that's cold. That's what my was saying. I was like, that's, guys, that's cold. And then as soon as that left, that thought took, you know, moments. I was like, what are you, some little bitch? Get the fuck back in that bath. And guess what? So I got in the bath and I was like, yep, that's cold. I knew that was happening. I felt this before. But the part I didn't feel is my bare ass going underneath the water. So as soon as I sat down in the water, immediately my body convulses up like I have a demon inside of me trying to come out. And I hop out of that tub one more fucking time. And I'm like, Jesus Aww. Christ, that's... That's cold water. And then I think about it. I was like, motherfucker, you already knew that was cold. <clears throat> so we, we meet these discomforts. And we change our perspective. We change our reality by doing what? Controlling our thoughts and our focus. We let our bodies and emotions decide those things for us. It is time to get control of your own life and yourselves. So the third time I stepped in that thing, I told myself, you're going to fucking do this or you're, what's the point? You're going to do it. And I did it. And guess what? It fucking sucked. It sucked a lot. My breath was like, oh, like yeah. I've never breathed in my entire life. And I was trying to figure it out. And the thing was, is I've never breathed in that cold water. I've never had to breathe under those physical circumstances. 
and under those mental circumstances. So you must build a blueprint. What Jay said with the who and the what and the why, right? Who do you want to be? Why do you want to be that thing? And I would challenge you, how are you going to fucking do it? You're going to turn your fucking brain off. You're going to remember why you're getting in that tub or why you're doing whatever it is you want to do. And you do it anyways. Because if not, you're cheating yourself. Jay talked about you're cheating your time. Yep. If you fucking just quit, that was a waste of time. And guess what? That was a waste of peace, of just a piece of your life. You will now not become that person you wanted to become until you decide the next time to do it again. People think of failure, right? Is like, oh, you know, I can't do this or whatever. Failure is a natural part of success. We have to fail, fail, fail until we succeed. All those failures, perspective, learn from it. When you get a success, learn from it. Meet triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. In our team, we had a few people finally get a certain position that they've been trying to acquire for some time. And they were partying and I congratulated them. And next thing I'm going to tell them is the fight's not fucking over. You had one small win. One small win, treat triumph and disaster as the same fucking thing. They're imposters. Keep moving forward. Don't let that triumph or disaster tweak your perception, tweak your reality. They don't exist. You have to be that person. The minute you accept triumph, the minute you accept disaster, you become the same person you were before. And if Confucius is right, and I really think he is, and your sec, your first life, right, is that thing, and then the minute you realize you only have one life, that's your second life, right? You have to do that over and over and over. We talked about the cataclysm, the trigger. Those happen all the time. Challenge yourself. Make yourself dis uncomfortable and that's going to look different for all of us we all struggle with different things we all lead different lives we have different realities and different perspectives figure out what it is for you and start controlling it when Jocko talks about discipline equals freedom the minute you start to control that you realize how much freedom you actually have that's it Yep. And I got something to piggyback off of that that just came to mind. Let me see if it comes out good. Don't be content with being less than who you want to be. Yeah. Don't be content with being less than who you actually want to be. Because... In in a sense, you got what's up? Me is that Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, that's what they Okay. Oh, I don't know. I that just came to mind. Maybe he did say that. I love it. Jay just said that right now. I should have. I should have started beating on my chest when I was saying it. Yeah. Uh. What are we talking talking about? about? Uh, Content with being less than who you are. Oh, here we go. Who you want to be. Another nice little, yeah, (coughs) nice other little epiphany revelation that I had from my trip also was the understanding that we at any time can choose to become somebody completely different Mm -hmm. than who we are. We can do that. At at this moment, we decide we want to get on up out of here and move to 
the middle of whatever other country we could there's obviously certain limitations that could possibly be a factor there's going to be variables but if i decided to just go and become something else start going to school for something else in my life it can happen you can make that happen you at any moment can decide to all right i want to now try to learn this so that i can be better at it go ahead you can if you oh. don't find obstacles in front of you to hold yes. you back you'll be able to change yourself to become something else that's that's how i saw it just a like a vision of you create the character that you play here by whatever it is that you want to give it whatever attributes you want to enhance in your character you create this character that you are living so how is it that you want the character to exist here yeah. with what information do you want it to have what type of role do you want it to have in society You can do that at any time. And I've seen it. I've done it myself. I mean, like I've said, I've made decisions, like life-changing, drastic decisions to say, you know, hey, uh, I'm going to move to San Francisco and try to see how I can make it out there. And failed, in a sense, failed, right? At the time, felt like I failed. But damn, that experience now is so much more valuable to me than yep. anything so then you know i go and i move to portland enjoy my time there for two years get a little homesick and decide you know hey i want to go be closer to family to raise my daughter with them and i go and damn life is hard now in miami and it's a lot more you know difficult to live here so my perspective is now changing it's like damn did i make a bad decision to move back here like fuck i failed i failed at this this is this was not a good decision and little by little started making my way out away from south florida i went started living in west palm beach and then eventually moved up to jacksonville and then i had a friend who provided me the opportunity and i ended up in austin loved it out there but then issues happen life experiences things are happening you know with family and stuff and i'm just like You don't know how much time you have with people, man. So living further away is like, fuck. I only get to, and I've, I've, I've heard it, I've heard it mentioned too, like on a, some podcast, where you start evaluating the time that you're gonna have to spend with somebody in their life, and you start actually kind of calculating that. It's like, okay, so I go down there to visit like once a year, and I'm there probably five days. That's five days this five days this year five days the next so i'll probably only see my parents for x amount of time and for the rest of for the rest of life i didn't like how short those numbers were so that's that's one of the reasons why i decided to move closer just because i wanted to be able to spend more time because that's you know the perspective like you don't know how much time you have here, how much time you have with certain people that you have. Be aware of that. You know, be aware that you can be whomever you want to be, improve yourself. You, it's hard. It's rough. I understand the negativity that goes inside certain people's head is very, can be very powerful because I've been there before. I mean, I, I, I grew up, discontent with life unhappy with my situation i felt like damn i wish i would have had somebody else's life but now understanding other people's perspectives and stuff it's like hey mine wasn't that bad look where i've where i'm at now how i've turned out it's not that bad man there's so many other people that have it way worse and that's where perspective comes in to play the most, where you 
put yourself into somebody else's shoes. Understand what they got going on and how much, how much more difficult it can be for somebody else. How much, how to somebody else they value a certain job more than you would just because this is more money to them than they would ever make wherever they're from. And so they are content with that and they're happy because that's as far as they feel that they can go. And maybe factors also come into play as to why they can only go that far. But there's all different types of people and just the, what they'll settle for is completely different than what you would settle for. And that's probably where just experiences have formed, like you, like you were saying, right? Whatever it is that you, your diet, whatever your diet is in life is what forms and shapes your perspective. It molds itself. So you become that person. While you were talking about that, it, it was taking me back to exactly what felt like two and a half years of just a decline in 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 myself and i guess in a sense covid played a huge factor in it i mean i gained a lot of weight during that time and felt like i was just down all the time uh, i think a lot of us were a lot of us were going through certain things i was one of the ones that was affected i mean i was drinking heavily i was just at home a lot of us couldn't even go out some people just stayed comfortably at home and didn't go outside because it was just too hot because that was a concern it's that was a limitation that i had set for myself right and to now see what perspective i'm living now and where i'm at now and how i see things i'm just i i, I just i'm i look back and i go Damn, you weren't even thinking about any of this, man. Like, you weren't even trying. You you wanted to. You wanted to do this. I, there was always the intentions. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to try to go to the gym tomorrow. No. Got too comfortable. Oh, you know, I sat down on the couch to start watching the show. Like, an episode or, or like an episode or two already in. I'm like, ah, ah fuck it. I'm just stay. I gave in to comfort. I gave in. I was like, fuck it. And that was day after day after day after day. Till eventually I got somewhere where I was just like, this has to stop because if not, it's, it's going to just continue. That's how I feel a lot of times when I see things just going and continuing going into a negative thing without anything kind of stopping it or anybody saying like hey let's let's calm down with this it's just going to continue growing and getting worse so that's eventually where I, that led me and i just i think through a trip and just the intent that i always had to become a different person all of that is where it's led me now to where i'm at You got anything else to uh to include on there, uh, guys? You said something, Jay, that uh, in an instant you can change, make a change in your life, right? Um, I want to add that and beg people. <laughs> to to make a change so when in an instant your life changes you can prepare yourself for that last december december 8th 2022 i will never forget this day was a day that my friend stepped out in front of a train and i wish i wish every day that i had prepared myself for something like that. I took for granted that my best friend that I had from since the third grade was going to be here for the rest of my life. And guess what? He's not fucking here. 
right? And it would have just taken one instant, one instant for me to prepare. And maybe even I, and I wish to God that I knew what his perspective was. I, w I wish that every day I missed out on his perspective and I missed out on, on being able to help him, right? And that's extremely important. So I, when I say I'm, be I'm genuinely begging everybody listening to in an instant change your life so when life changes, you can handle it. That's all I got. <laughs> that's that's all I have to say yeah, about I, that. I, I I I agree with you, man. And I've I've feel like I can somewhat sort of and I've I've talked to certain cousins of mine and I've told them, damn. We're we're kind of lucky because in our family we haven't had like real major tragedy that has hit us yet. And I mean, I still have grandparents um, alive on both sides of my, of my family, you know, a lot of no like crazy incidents where like a, a uncle or somebody has tragically passed away. Thank God. Um, but not the case with, you know, my wife's side of the family. I mean, I've had to go and experience, you know, the tragedy of her losing three loved ones in a span of three months. Jeez. And how that whole thing just changes the perspective of, of a lot of things. Like, that somebody can be gone in an instant, man. Mm -hmm. In an instant. And you just saw him a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, I had I'm a feeling that to... was going to happen, but hey, man, yeah. that's life. It is it life. Is life. Sometimes you get a little in. teary because, you know. Yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> Finish what you were going to say, Jay. Okay. Sometimes you get a little teary, you know, because. We have emotions, man. You know, we, we are tied to people in our lives. And right now, I guess what's on my mind is what I'm sure is on my wife's mind. <laughs> We're going to now be at like five years since my sister-in-law's passing uh, here in the next like 10 days. Yep. So that's that to me is one of the biggest moments in my life where I'm just like, wow like in an instant everything just changes like completely. completely now you have to experience life without this person this person is gone this person is missed and that's just life man yep. <laughs> don't take it for granted nope don't take it for granted because at any moment man at any moment. So that's that's <clears throat> going just kind of to kind of bring it over to a wrap here with this. Oh, well, hold on. I want something to be caught on this podcast. We need to. For both of you and myself. Go ahead. A little bit of selfishness here. Um, so we're talking <laughs> about this. You guys are struggling. People watching us on video, I'm sure... <laughs> You can see all of us are struggling. You might be struggling yourself. So, you know, we get tears and we get, we cry and all these things when we think about these tragedies, these losses in our lives. And Jason Silva once told me that... We do, we feel those things and it hurts because it was so beautiful. 
when we mm. when we lose that person. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best here. It's because we remember all of those good times. For sure. That, that's what gets me and every we miss time. Them, right? mm -hmm. We miss them every time. Yeah. And so uh, I'm not sure I've done this with Jay. I know for sure I've done this with, with Mike. And I hope you all understand where I'm coming from but at oftentimes I'll say some challenging things so that way we can gain the other side's perspective and we already talked about Mike and how Mike and I started our connection through stoicism you know we we're sitting in this merger and we uh, there was stuff going on but I kind of knew what Mike was dealing with, is, which is what he just talked about. And um, me as a caring person, it's hard to watch somebody suffer, you know? And Especially if you've been through something similar, right? And so that is why I told Mike out loud some of those quotes. I made it seem as though it was just for me dealing with the struggle of that little bit of um, discomfort. And I'm not trying to talk myself up in any way. Um, I was not discomfort or I was not uncomfortable because of this merger thing and people were stressed. It just Let me just stop you for a second, it, Nate. But... Yeah. Yeah. Let me just stop you for a second and say you a hundred percent put me on a path that I needed to be on. So right. when you, when you say that you're not trying to talk yourself up, Fucking talk yourself up. Because you gave me exactly what I needed, exactly when I needed it. Wow. Right. And so, Ooh. and inside of what perspective can do for you is this is what stoicism and that poem from Rudyard Kipling did to me is it allowed me to see past myself. I've already spoken about previously I was a, really selfish person I still think in ways I am that person and I'm working on it through self-reflection and trial and meeting those failures in the moment I knew the person next to me was dealing with more than just the stress in front of us and so I utilized those things as a tool to allow them to see this new perspective and you know, earlier Jay was uh, about to talk about something and I was hoping he'd get into it. And he talked about him moving and all these things. He's talked about in other episodes. He can just pack up and go on for this new thing. Or I'm not sure if that was in an episode or that was just us talking. Um, but he's able to do that. He's able to start fresh. And in that poem from Rudyard Kipling called If, he says, if you can take one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. The pain that you My all are getting stanza. to experience tonight from us is that we've put one heap of all our winnings in that just like you have and we've experienced that failure and we understand we don't know what it's like for you but we understand how hard that is and how hard it can be and we're doing this whole thing live instead of you know around a fire drinking beer water whatever the, whatever it is 
because we want to help others. We want other people to see this perspective. You are not alone. Your perception and reality are yours, but other people deal with things that are similar and they, they don't affect us the same way, but it has the potential to do it very linearly. And so when you go to, as I said earlier, step in that water, remember these moments, remember these things, because these emotions are powerful. And a lot of people look at Stoics and Stoicism as emotionless beings, and it's not. It's channeling your emotions in the appropriate way. So we're talking about perception, and a lot of the times in our episodes, we talk about your mind and all these things. Channel your emotions. If you feel anxiety, use that anxiety to fuel you going forward. You might fail. We all fail. That's part of it. Learn and go forward. You got to keep moving. Right? Failure is not final. It's not. It's not. And that's why I'm so in love with that Dylan. That Dylan, sorry, Dylan Thomas quote again. I will not go gently into that good night. I will rage, rage, rage against the dying of the light. You have to feel that. You know, you have to want it as bad as you want to breathe. I forget the gentleman that said that in a motivational video. But if you don't want it that bad, you're not going to change. And these perspectives and how they're happening all the time. Jay talked about it with his new, uh, you know, locations, physical locations. But that gained him a new mental perspective. And that's why he had to keep going. Whether they were failures or successes, he kept evolving. And I've seen Mike do it from the very beginning that Mike and I started working together. He said some things, and then I've seen him do the opposite of whatever that was. And that has to take a perspective shift. Post Mike's event that he spoke about, maybe not in a good place in the mind, as soon as we started doing that, he started growing. Mike recently, hopefully, Mike's not going to kill me for saying this, he put in for a lead position within our team. What's fucking funny is like th four days before that shit was posted, Mike was like, I'm never going to be a lead. I don't want to. And then the position got posted, and that's all he could see. That's all he could think about. And he got the position. And so we all have to remember, like, it's not like Instagram and TikTok and YouTube highlights and whatever we're watching. We're watch when we see those, they could be the millionth take, the thousandth take, right? It takes trying to do it. You have to keep going. Everything you want to be, you want to do in your life, keep going. Are you going to fall down? Yep. But success is defined as picking yourself up one more time than you've been knocked down. So even if you didn't think you met your goal in this specific task, your success is is getting back to it. And that could even be something different. For myself, uh, I, I'm currently, you know, I got this resume of I can do quite a bit of things. And that's because I took one heap of all my winnings and risked it on one turn and pitch and toss and lost and started again at my beginnings. I tried all those things with everything I had. And whether I thought in the time that I success succeeded or failed, those things aligned me with a very famous quote that William Shakespeare is famous for. 
and that's jack of all trades, master of none, oftentimes better mm. than a master of one. And when you come into it with that perspective of, okay, maybe I didn't get to the level that I originally wanted to, you gain something from that. And each time you change your mind, your perspective, or your direction, you gain something. And that becomes a part of you because it's like our diet. And so then at some point in your life, somebody's going to be like, oh, man, I really don't know how to do this thing or where to start. And you're going to be like, what you doing? And they're going to tell you and you're going to be like, oh, why don't you try this? Just like a little hint. And hope to God I see you. I I find that you see them take that and run and they gain some success. And at first you're going to see they don't think they succeeded. But from your perspective, you're going to see all that distance traveled. And then you can be the person that tells them you got to keep going. All right. Mike, you came up with a quote while I was uh, venting there? Uh, I did. I did. Um, And so when I was putting my quotes together for this episode, (laughs) I was looking at this one and I'm like, "Uh, I don't know if it's really a perspective thing, but um, as we're going along in this episode, uh, it most definitely fits. Uh, It's from Seneca. Let us meet with bravery, whatever may befall us. Let us never feel a shudder at the thought of being wounded or being made a prisoner or of poverty or persecution. Damn. So, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? We're meeting these challenges and not being a prisoner to these challenges. Yep. Right? Changing our perspective to get through these. Uh, We, I think as a, especially the three of us, right? We're really good at putting ourselves under persecution, right? Because Nate, what did I tell you right after I interviewed for that lead position? I toasted it, or you, you said you tanked it. Well, I don't remember the word, but you did. I said feel I shit the bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said yeah. I shit the bed, <clears throat> right? And that's because my perspective has always been like, I, I won't get it, right? This is going to be a failure that I'm going to have to learn from, right? But it took me, it took me from. It, what it taught me was that I don't have to be a prisoner to that, right? And I just talked to my counselor about this today, too. <laughs> yes, I go to counseling, so that's out there. Uh, you know, my <coughs> self-talk. My self-talk has to change, right? And I'm sure I'm not the only one. You know, I'm sure there's some listener out there that has the same thing. Your perspective on yourself has to change. And I'm fighting that battle with you. Right? Uh, But it's something that can be won. Right? But you have to put in the work. You have to put yourself in that bathtub full of cold water to change your perspective. You have to get up every day at 430 So you can do your routine and be disciplined. That's not comfortable. That's not fun. But don't be a prisoner to your weakness. Go out and get it fucking done. Yeah. You know, something that I'm thinking about. So while we're. Oh. You want me to go or you? Let me, yeah, I'll take this one. I got it. So <laughs> something that I wanted to uh, respond to Nate's uh, point was when we were talking about failures. And 
I've thought about that as well, like how I felt about all those experiences that I had that I considered failures or that it just was upset about the fact that they didn't turn out the way that I would have liked them to have. I'm, you know, I'm Fati. You know, it is what it is. Those experiences had to happen in order for me to become the person that I am. If those didn't happen the way that they did, then I wouldn't have learned everything that I learned. Life would have been different. We don't know if it would have been better. So this is what I got, right? What I have now. There's nothing better. I have to deal with this life. So I got to make the best of it. So that's that's how I see those moments, right? The moments that I felt like, oh, man, like I didn't get that job. That's fine. You got a job where you had to grind for a while and, and eventually you learned some things or two from there. Your opinions changed on certain things. You got to experience working with you know certain individuals. You got to see certain characteristics that then you start realizing later on, oh, it's a pattern. Certain people get into certain roles and then they completely change. They get consumed by it and they no longer treat you the way that they did before because now they think that they're different above you or they just have more control. And so now they're going to make their job easier. And that happens in a lot of places. It sucks. So and then on what Mike was saying, right? <laughs> We are hard on ourselves, man. Like you were talking about the part about the negative thoughts and just constantly being negative about yourself. I, that was me, man. And my per, that, that was my perspective because that's what I learned. That's what I experienced. Yeah. So there, that's a lot of times now I harp on certain things too, like, in my unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's comical at the same time to, I, I, I'll i shed some background on myself. I'm, my background is my parents are from El Salvador. So my people from El Salvador have a, an interesting way of talking uh, when they're having conversations, which a lot of times is downputting. It's, it's a lot of bashing. It's a lot of uh, <clears throat> just degrading words pretty much that a lot of times i wonder like why is that the common thing it's hilarious to me to hear it because of the way that they say it and understanding that they really don't mean ill intent with their words because that's just the way that they're accustomed to talking and saying these things right but you hear it and you start realizing like oh that's negative those are negative words that you're hearing those are negative you know, things that are building your mind to become negative. You pick that up regardless. And you do not understand what the intent of a person is. That's going back onto what how you will never know truly what somebody has going on through their in their mind, what their intent is. Only by what we may feel or what they say is their intent and if we feel like they're being genuine and honest. But Stuff like that, the negative things, like maybe, so like when I ask myself the questions, right, like why am I the way that I am, (laughs) a lot of times I go, ah, those are the characteristics of the parents. That's where this comes from. So then I realize I don't like this. I don't like being this way. I don't like saying these things. I don't like reacting this way. And so then I started asking the question, what do I need to do to not be that way, to not react that way, to not think that way, to not approach things in that manner? Because I have seen how it doesn't help. It's not beneficial to think this way, to be this way. So I need to do something to not continue to be this way because it's not helping me. It's not helping me in my marriage. It's not helping me in life. I stress about things that I don't need to stress about. I care about certain things that I really don't need to care about or put too much care into them. Um, 
there's things that distractions that mold and shape what my perspective was. And so again, what you in take in into your body through visual, whatever it is that you, that also shapes your perspective. So that's, if anything, that's what I would like people to take from any of our episodes. I mean, I, I'm sure that people take a lot of stuff from our, our, our podcasts. I'm, we can we can talk about that later uh, when we're done here about certain things as far as what we're seeing, how what our reach has been. But I'm sure a lot of people are are still listening to our, our stuff because there are certain things that they're liking to hear. But I think perspective for me at least it's very important especially right now right now in what it just feels like people are just divided and just becoming more and more distant and just developing in sometimes what seems to be ridiculous perspectives of of just what life is or how life should be we need to be we need to have more compassion and empathy for understanding perspective just trying to understand what this who this person is what this person is why is this person the way that they are and go into it knowing that you are not going to understand 100% you are never going to understand exactly what that person's life was like what they've had to go through what they deal with what their thoughts are like we don't know that's that's why sometimes i hear certain people say like you know he was a, he was he was such a good guy i didn't understand why he did what he did it's like uh, there's certain things that people think about like they go through that they don't share with nobody there's certain dark moments in people's lives that there's <coughs> nobody else has heard of them, of that, of, of those thoughts of, you know, things that have been constantly playing in their head, telling them like, you're, you're a piece of shit. You, you're no good. You're a failure. A lot of times people aren't vocal about that and they wear it with, they wear it inside deep down, but they have to put on a whole different mask when they're outside because that's what that's the character that they develop for themselves the one that hides it that doesn't worry about what you know what that issue is and just leaves it there but that still starts eating at you so i think one of the most important things is always the, you know the self-reflection find out why are you the way that you are what is it that is it about you that you don't like that you want to change and then figure out what you need to do in order to start working to improve yourself to change that whatever like whatever the, the the situation is figure it out find what the problem is try to find a solution always try to resolve things everything should be about resolving arguments should be about resolving because there's no point in an argument with somebody if what the end solution is to resolve whatever the issue is like sometimes i hear like debates and stuff like oh we got uh <clears throat> we have debates on you know this person and what that person has to say it's like at the end of it are we trying to solve anything for everybody or or what it's just like no it's never about trying to come to some sort of solution to things it's just about being dominant on one side because my perspective overpowers your perspective because that's how i feel like about it and that's not how things should be, man. Yeah, I think I uh, I got all of that out of my out of my system. Yeah. Um. Wow, what an episode. Yeah. <laughs> I just I want to briefly just end it with kind of discussing where where I feel as far as this whole thing, right? The the, the podcast and and whatnot. <laughs> Holy shit. What's it been? What is this episode nine? I think so. Yeah. To to just 
randomly click on episode one and hear what that conversation was like and how I was so scared, you know, <laughs> in the first episodes. And now I'm just like, fuck it. Just, I got to say what I got to say. I'm going to get it out. Just, I've, I've every day worked on how to improve myself as far as the delivery. Slow down the pace. Don't try to speak exactly at that moment that you think about that. Just let it flow out. Just be calm. You know, start working on breathing. All of this, man. Since since we started, I, I there's so many plans. So many, the the vision is just far out there, and we're still taking it day by day, one at a, one day at a time, right? Because that's the only place we can live. And then I think about it like, damn, like are we're gaining some followers here. We got some people liking our stuff on Instagram. Some we're getting followers on TikTok, but at the end of the day, it's like, hey man, there's there's a handful of people that are already listening. Appreciate that. Because you had zero right when you started. So it's 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 cool, man. I, I, I'm I'm enjoying this. I I love it. I I like that. I like how far our reach has gone as far as where people have been playing our, our podcast. <laughs> It's it's bizarre, right? Because then you think of, that's again perspective. Like, damn, what situation is that person in? That they decided, damn, I want to listen to this. In yep. In Italy, in France. <coughs> what what else? What was the other locations we said last time? We said, I don't Scotland, I Kenya, Kenya, oh, yeah. Thailand. Yeah. Just, just those, just randomly those countries appearing on on the on the oh Germany on the analytics Serbia Turkey India shout outs to everybody from all those locations Canada and then you know all the different states and cities that appear for us there um, and all the other platforms and their their analytics man it's a it's a crazy crazy like whole what's it been six months now. From the initial moment that we had the discussion of, hey, man, I've been thinking that I want to start a podcast. I don't know if, you, if you're interested. And then it's like, hey, I just opened a Discord. Uh, do you want to join? To then back-to-back days of just constantly like, hey, like I want to do this. I want to set it up like this. Let's try to figure out how we can record it. To, hey, man, I found a program. Let's do this. You know, Hours and hours and hours of just like, let me try to figure out how this thing works, dude. Wow, like this wasn't me a year ago. That's crazy. I, I'm I, I'm still like just in shock. I'm like, wow, okay, this is this is what it is. Okay, fine. I am going with what my vision said. I can become who I decide I want to be, and this is what I'm deciding that I'm gonna be. And I don't care what anybody else says. Yep. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys for this uh, long episode. Uh, For me, it's pretty late. I'm sure it's late for you guys. Uh, I just want to end it with some last comments. I mean, I just hope everyone gets something out of this and just understands that we all have different perspectives in life, man. We're all different. Uh, We all have different things that make us who we are and we should just be more aware of that and think about it and approach things in that manner because you might shock somebody when you actually treat them nicely just because you're a little bit more understanding that hey man this person only knows how to be aggressive because that's the way that they learned how to interact in life and sometimes you just have to have an indifferent approach to things and just tell them like hey man I'm not trying to cause this on you you're feeling this way i understand that but i'm this is not my intent words communication man that that calms a lot of people down so yeah. hopefully you guys learned something out of here hopefully this is uh something that means something to somebody out there as well uh i appreciate you guys for joining me on this podcast um any any last send offs here i got i got a quote 
I'm going to finish with, of course, I have a quote. All right, it's from Marcus. Stop drifting. Sprint to the finish. Write off your hopes. And if your well-being matters to you, be your own savior while you can. That's all I got. Yeah, we'll just end it right there, man. I just was going to say, on let's, let's end it on that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. See you on the next episode. Peace. Peace. What up, listeners? We wanted to take a moment to express our gratitude for your support and for taking the time to tune into our podcast. We value your feedback and recommendations, and we'd love to hear your stories about how stoicism or any other self-improvement practice has impacted your journey. Please send your stories or any info you'd like to share with us to thestreetstoics at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Street Stoics to stay connected and receive latest updates. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing with others. Thank you again for being part of our community.